over the last few weeks, we've seen AI do everything, right? From generating images to generating audio, summarizing text. One thing that we haven't seen it doing, though, is to call the Microsoft Graph. Some say that you could do it, and actually you can. So you are about to see a demo where you can use AI to call the Microsoft Graph, and that is really, really cool. So with that, over to you, Rahan. Uh, disclaimer, this is my first community call, and I'm glad to be presenting. So I'll just quickly go ahead. Um, there might be minor hiccups, um, as is with all live presentation, so please bear with me. Um, quickly moving on to the screen share. So uh, for the Microsoft Hack Together Hackathon, I built Magi, which is basically a hack which combines uh, the power of Microsoft Graph and hooks it up with LLM magic to uh, give you a wizard, like uh, like in uh, not in a little sense, a figurative wizard who's able to help you with all your Microsoft Graph usage. I'll start by playing the demo I'd made for the hackathon so that all, all of us are up to speed. Magi is a smart AI which answers your queries using the power of the Microsoft Graph API. That response was verbose. Let's only ask for the given names of the employees. You can do much more than simply view the employees. How about checking up on the unread emails of a user? Or the latest events on their calendar? All this and so much more is possible with Magi. And the magic behind Magi is the powerful Microsoft Graph API. Yep. So... Uh, for if you miss out what, on what happened in a demo, the uh, Magi is basically a command line tool where you can issue queries for anything re uh, re related to your Microsoft 365 data, which can be fulfilled by Graph API. So that could range anywhere from uh, viewing your to-do list or to even say something more involved like uh, checking up on your e-discovery cases. So how Magi was born was, it was basically my answer to the question, what if I can just talk with the Microsoft Graph? So Microsoft Graph is an impressive piece or impressive framework for building intelligent apps. It's got tremendous documentation and excellent toolkit. Uh, and there's also, there are already a way of the Graph Explorer to play around with the Microsoft APIs. However, uh, it's still more steps than we would like to. Uh, a user might not want to figure out all the authentication, all the permissions required for a particular API, and what are, what are the permutations you can call the API with. What if all that could be simpl simplified to the user where it could just, in a way, command the Microsoft Graph API? So that's the core reason for building Magi. And it has three building blocks. It's a command and application. Uh, it uses the ChatGPT API and it relies on Microsoft Graph. I'll go into detail uh, in each of these building blocks and there will be code. So I will share the snippets of code we used to build a hack. So here's the flow of how Magi works. So first, a user issues a query to Magi. Uh, so, and the secret sauce of Magi is it relies on the ChatGPT API to actually uh, decode the a user query into HTTP requests, which it can for Microsoft Graph. So after the ChatGPT API returns the HTTP request for Microsoft Graph, Magi takes care of all the authentication permissions and the, all the scaffolding and makes a graph request and surfaces the re graph response to the user. Magi was built in approximately two days, and the reason I was able to build this in such a quick time with quick turnaround was because of the Vibrant.net ecosystem. I had, for all the functionality I wanted, there was a package to get me started and so that I didn't have to deal with the details of what I need of, of say, stuff which is required, but rather I could focus on the stuff which I wanted to do. So for the command line, I relied on a new System dot command line package, which is in preview. The ChatGPT API was delivered through an OpenAI community supported package, and Microsoft Graph was built. The support for Microsoft Graph came from the Graph SDK. Uh, going a bit into the uh, CLI parts, so System dot command line is a new package which is currently in preview, and it's 
a fluent way of describing command line applications. Uh, uh, you don't have to take uh, read the args which you pass into main anymore and deal ensure that all the types are right, all the options are given correctly, and do the validations and all. It's a fluent interface for building CLI apps in a very quick manner. In, uh, it's such quick that the CLI skeleton of Magi was just 16 lines. So here's a snippet of how all the CLI stuff for Magi. I basically uh, specified the argument, which was a query, which, which, which the user would provide to Magi. Then I specified a command, which is the Magi functionality itself. And I could even easily specify options like if the user wants to specify a configuration file for their AAD tenant and etc., they can even specify it an option. And after hooking it up through a, a set handler and stuff, it was ready to go. And then here, here's the fun part. How do I make ChatGPT understand Microsoft Graph? So LLMs are tremendous technology, and we're still discovering what all is possible through them. When OpenAI announced the ChatGPT API, I was intrigued and I wanted to see how I could fit in the API with the hackathon and that's how I got started on it. To make use of the ChatGPT API, I use the community-made OpenAI library, which gives a very .NET native interface for working with the API. Moving on to the most important part of the hack was how do I get ChatGPT to generate the correct HTTP requests to hit graph. So the key was prompt engineering, which is basically you instruct ChatGPT to do something and then you iterate upon those prompts so as to you, so that you arrive at something which gives you what you want to a acceptable manner. So here you can see the prompt I've used to make Magi work. I was basically, um, the first sentence itself, you are an AI assistant. Um, I basically asked ChatGPT to assume the role of Magi, and I guided it how it would work. An important part of making it work was so that I could identify the HTTP request correctly. So what I instructed was, you should only provide me the responses in this form, HTTP verb or end, and endpoint. I had to do this because if if you have used ChatGPT uh, so far, you know that it is verbose and it could go on and on and on about various stuff related to the question you asked instead of directly answering it. I wanted a straightforward response so that I could easily parse it and make the Microsoft Graph request. Coming to how the Graph SDK worked, so. Uh, one piece which I have to take care of is that the Graph SDK is very structured. In order to make a request for the user's API, you would use graph client.users.get a sync or something like that. The issue I had, a user of Magi could make a query for any arbitrary endpoint. It could it could range from users to to-do and all. Mapping all these requests to a specific graph request is not trivial because there can be and number of permutations. So what I did was I used the graph client factory to get me an instance of the graph base client, which is basically an HTTP client on steroids, which with an authentication provider and other niceties, which with which you can easily make graph requests. So once you obtain a, H, a client graph client from the graph client factory, all it's all a matter of populating the HTTP request message and making that request. Uh, before I delve into questions, I'll go a bit deeper into the code. So what you're seeing right now is Magi in its entirety. So all these are the imports. And then this is system message is a prompt which I shared earlier, where I'm basically instructing chat GBT to uh, give me the response in this manner. Going down, we have all the CLI stuff, the query argument, which to take query from the user, the config file argument option. And uh, so what happens is after I hit the ChatGPT API with the user's query and it returns the HTTP request, I pass the request 
pass the response sorry and then i create a graph client and make the http request message so i check the response and then i create a graph request i do authorization and i simply send the http request i get a response i print it in a pretty manner and i show it to the user and yeah that's the magic behind magi i'll like i'll show perhaps a live demo like of one or one use case just to like cement that is actually working so here i'm asking the names of the employees in the company and here you see this get is what the chat gpt api response so i'm able to take this information and make further calls for instance the unread emails of particular user so here you can see that this is the uh, chat gpt api response and i'm able to build on top of it to fulfill the user's query if you've got any questions uh, please ask them like i'm not able to look at the chat because of some weird error so i would love it if someone could feel a like narrate a question now Rohan, I can, I guess I hear, I can, I can work as a, a kind of a few comments and questions. Uh, I have to call out the amount of code within your solution is just spot on because it actually shows the power of SDKs, right? So you're basically yes. using the existing combination, but that's the beauty of modern developers as well. It's not about the amount of code. It's about how do you combine the existing libraries. So really awesome stuff there. And somebody was saying, are you a uh, Harry Potter? Uh, so because of the, you know, the amount of the, the things work surprisingly well. Uh, is there a documentation on this in GitHub? Have, I know that you have a repo uh, available on that on yep. the solution, um, and it has some level of a documentation. Again, it's magical how simple it is, but it's still incredibly powerful. Uh, so it, it just really shows the flexibility of those APIs and, and how you combine the implementation. And, and I think one of the key magic, I don't know, how, how long does it, Say, did it take you to create the the instructions for OpenAI? Um, so the the prompting. Um, it took me around two hours. Um, I found the process very uh, interactive and fun. Like you are essentially teaching this mold of clay how to behave, how you want it to behave. <laughs> so that yeah. part was like super fun and it's it was engaging. Yeah. How, how did you solve uh, what is the right prompt for doing that? Uh, is that just running documentation and examples, or how did you do that? It was an iterative process with a lot of trial and error. And yeah. One thing I found which helped me was I tried to view the mental model of, like, I thought of myself as chat GPT and say, what would be a, a specific set of instructions which are so tightly scoped to what I want? Yeah. So, like wearing a hat and like thinking about it helps. Yeah, and I I have to say this is an absolutely brilliant example. We've been there's this classic ongoing meme joke related on everybody will be a prompt engineer at some point um, because now the AI is taking over the world, but but that's part of the game, right? So it's part of the the now the tool set. Are you afraid? Just out of curiosity, for uh, before we go to that and close up the call, are you Rohan afraid of losing your job because say? Hey, AI is taking over the world and then be, you know, developers are no longer needed. What's your feeling based on this exercise? Uh, if anything, AI would help me make, do my job much better. And if at all we ever reach a point that I'm jobless because of an AI, I'll probably move on to more fun things. Yeah, absolutely. That I personally, I, I do agree on that thinking. It's the, I think whenever we introduced cars back in 19 or whatever, 10, people were afraid that people, you know, horses are no longer needed and yep. everybody is losing their job and blah, blah, blah. That's not the case. It's evolution. It's an abstraction of things and we can focus on more meaningful uh, functionalities So or, or tasks as a humans. So really, really cool. Thank you, Rohan. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, really, really, really cool demo and, and a great demo, a great solution. I, I love the amount of code and you, how you openly shared also the code that this isn't too much. Uh, it's really a power of yeah. combining the right libraries. So, yeah. Um, if anyone ever wants to like uh, reach out and have a chat with me, I'm, I'm available on LinkedIn.
So you can just go linkedin.com slash in slash rank, rank B and hit me up. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. And Rohan, feel free to add those links in the chat. Uh, it's just easier for, for you know, clicking them, uh, what you had on the slides as well. Really, really cool. Awesome stuff. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.